time ago in our Washington studio. Stephen Fielding, thanks for joining us. Yeah, good evening, Tony. Are you uh, more or less sceptical about global warming after going to that conference? Look, I don't think it's a matter of being sceptical or extremist on this issue. It's too important to uh, play politics with. And uh, what I've done, I've got a self-funded trip uh, here, uh, you know, myself to Washington, uh, one of the biggest economies in the world, to really f hear firsthand both sides of the argument about uh, global warming and uh, what is uh, the response that, uh, that America are looking at taking and then also uh, considering what Australia should do in that context. And uh, I think it would be derelict if I didn't inform myself. I'm, I'm an engineer, uh, Tony, and I suppose that uh, looking at both sides is pretty important, uh, looking at the science and the facts and then analysing that and then, then making a decision. OK, who impressed you uh, in the conference yesterday? Well, look, yesterday I, I was uh, seeing the scientists uh, that were uh, uh, questioning the issue of uh, what is driving global warming. Today I'm uh, meeting uh, Obama's administration and uh, also uh, later on Senator Waxman's uh, office and his team to hear the other side uh, view. But yesterday uh, there was uh, certainly uh, you know, a view that uh, was questioning what was actually driving uh, climate change and whether there was a direct link between uh, CO2 or carbon emissions and global warming. And uh, they were putting forward some science and some evidence and some facts that were questioning uh, whether uh, CO2 is actually driving global warming. Well, they were saying it isn't gl uh, driving global warming. You just spent the whole day listening to people who claim that global warming is essentially a conspiracy. Uh, there's no need to do anything about carbon emissions. Uh, so I wonder, has that influenced in any way your decision on how to vote uh, for the emissions trading scheme when it comes into the Senate? Look, I'll be uh, hearing from the White House today. Of, of course, this trip is uh, pretty critical in uh, making sure that I'm fully informed and uh, of the uh, of the arguments for and against. Uh, and uh, I'll be coming back to uh, Australia to sit down with the uh, Senator Wong and uh, the Rudd government to share with him and to, to just to see what their thoughts are and what I've heard from here. Now, what they did say yesterday, the scientists, and, and look, I, I'm not saying that they're right, but they've actually put a very big question about uh, the link between carbon emissions and uh, global warming. Now, what they put forward yesterday was that, in fact, over the last 10 years, carbon emissions have gone up, but global, or the temperatures, global temperatures have not gone up. Now, well, that I mean, obviously... Uh, yeah, you, uh, yes, that's, that is their claim, that uh, since 1998, when there was a peak in, uh, in temperatures, it hasn't gone up. But you'd be aware of the other uh, evidence on that, wouldn't you, I dare say? The Britain's Hadley Centre, yes. which is one of the most respected organisations involved in measuring global temperature, has data for global mean temperatures that says 1998 was the hottest year on record, 2005 the second hottest year on record, the third hottest, 2003, the fourth, 2002, the fifth hottest, 2004, and the sixth hottest, 2006. They're saying they're the hottest temperatures ever measured what? since temperatures were first taken in 1880. And so that puts a, a question on it. But, Tony, you know, you've, you've got to actually look at the, the facts and figures which you've put forward a case I'll need to, obviously, just to make sure that what I heard yesterday, what are the arguments against it? you have put them forward, but I need to check today with the Obama administration, and I may even check with the uh, Bradley uh, area uh, as well, and just to make sure, because this is too big an issue to get wrong. And what's worse, if we make the wrong decision, what's worse than that is if we make the right decision too late. And so the issue is that if you look at the graphs, if you look at the temperatures uh, over the last 10 years, yes, they've gone up and down, but they've actually, if you look at the average, it stayed uh, reasonably level, and CO2 emissions over that time have gone up drastically. So the whole idea about that there's a direct link between CO2 well, you could as ask the a major driver no. of, 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 of temperatures is a question that's been put to me, and I think I need to get to the bottom of it, and it really is important. I don't know what training that you've got, but as an engineer, I'm trained to actually look at both sides of the equation, and that's what I'm doing. So how are you planning to make up your mind in that case? Because uh, obviously well, you, said, you've, 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 now, you've now heard a whole range of uh, sceptics, some of them scientists, some of them not. Uh, now you're going to meet scientists who have a very different view. How are you going to weigh who's got this right? 
Well, you, you, you've got to challenge both sides. And, and up until now, I, I, like most Australians, have just believed one side of the story totally. I've never, we've never really considered as Australia, there's been never a real debate about looking at the other side of it. And I think we've all just believed that there's, it's definitely global warming uh, is a real issue and global warming is driven by carbon emissions. Now, the questions, and these scientists are pretty reputable yesterday, for them to actually say so strongly uh, and to just to discount it at a hand, I think he's foolish, uh, Tony, and I don't think we've had the proper debate in Australia about this issue, and therefore I think, you know, I need to actually be convinced myself. Now, obviously, the Rudd government are totally convinced. I need to bring back the information that I've got from yesterday, what I'll hear today over the next couple of days, and sit down with uh, Penny Wong and also the Rudd government and just have them challenge it back, and then I'll actually then maybe even look at the UK and what they've done and then make a final decision. But, Tony... This is going to be the biggest issue facing Australia. It will, it will cost jobs, there's no doubt about it. And as I said, it, to get it wrong, the risks are so high either way. Either, either way you do this, you've got to make sure you get it right. And I think I owe it to the Australian people and I'll be derelict in my duties not doing what I'm doing. And okay, as I said, so, it's a um, self-funded trip. I'm not paid by anyone to do this. I actually believe it's, the, it's, it's important to do because like most Australians, we've just believed one side of the debate and I haven't really spent enough time looking at the other side of the debate and that's what I'm doing. All right, so are you going to go into the White House and, uh, and actually have a devil's advocate debate uh, with the White House experts, with the, uh, the scientists who are advising Barack Obama, putting to them what you've heard at the sceptical conference? And arguing I'll, the toss be, with them? Is that the way you're going to handle this? I'll be doing two things. I wouldn't be uh, so provocative and rude about it, uh, Tony, but what I do want to do is to find out what they're actually doing, what they believe, uh, what globally needs to be done. So their own, uh, you know, Waxman sort of plan that they've currently got in place and what that's doing. And secondly, I will be actually, uh, you know, uh, not challenging them, but ask them to say, what do you say about this sort of science? What do you say about the claims that are being made yesterday? And I think just to sort of say, well, discount them as being sort of, uh, you know, rational and not logical and extreme. I, you know, I heard some, you know, some stuff yesterday from, I think, pretty critical people that we need to actually challenge ourselves to make sure that we've got it right, Tony. Have you still got an open mind when you go into the White House? Will you have an open mind? Could they convince you you come out the other end of this process and decide that the sceptical scientists are wrong and the vast majority of other scientists are right? Of course, Tony. I think that's the key to it, is you've got to have an open mind. And I think I, I tend to think that even around the world, and certainly from Australia, I don't think we've paid enough attention to the other side of the, the, the debate. I don't think we've really sort of really, you know, chewed on it, tussled over it, thought about it, made sure that it actually is the right way of actually going. And there is this direct link. They have actually got models that, that, that show that the solar energy, in other words, the energy from the sun, has a higher... A direct link with global temperatures than carbon emissions. And this is going back not only over the last 10 right, years, but uh, hundreds I, of I, years. I'm going to interrupt you there because there, there is a, a very long debate to be had on that. We, we are nearly out of time. But uh, it, it would be intriguing to see you have this debate with the experts who are advising Barack Obama. And uh, it would be very interesting to see what you think when you come out the other end of that process. So hopefully we'll get a chance to do that as well. Look, look forward to it, Tony. Okay, Steve Fielding, we thank you very much for uh, taking the time to come and talk to us tonight.